Hey, welcome back. Let's go and get a surface grinder. So, I found a small surface grinder on eBay and I headed out near Stuttgart to pick it up. First I was looking into a small Blanchard style tabletop grinder like this one. But then I found a proper surface grinder with a horizontal spindle that's built like a full-sized surface grinder just for also benchtop size. And it's made by a French company named Lip. And this is a picture of the machine. Uh, when I arrived it was quite dirty but in an okay shape. It, there wasn't no castings were broken or yeah, no major damage was done to it. So um, we took it apart. I loaded it up into my car and went back home. 200 and something kilometers. While the machine was still in the car, I took it apart a bit further. I took off the height adjustment with the bevel gear and I pulled off the vertical slide from the two vertical bars and I used the hand truck to move it down the stairs into the shop and then I had a real mess of parts all over the shop. I started to clean the machine and all the parts by hand with um, solvent, with household cleaner with the ultrasonic cleaner this is the c-axis spindle nut and here you can see a picture of the motor which later um, when i did the first test run blew up on me it's a three-phase 400 volt machine so a replacement motor was absolutely no problem and then these are all the parts after i cleaned them and as you can see, the paint job on the castings is still okay. It has chipped and worn in a few places, but I don't see any need to redo the paint. Then it was time to put the grinder back together. And after a few hours of work, I had the grinder back together almost completely and I was quite happy but there was a problem with the spindle the spindle taper had it, 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 it had run out of about one tenth of a millimeter so 0.1 millimeter and that's a bit much for a grinder so I decided to remachine the taper while the spindle was running at its own bearings I took the top slide of my lathe and I set it up on top of the magnetic chuck and I set the taper angle and I recut the taper but um, I recut it so that it takes the spindle flanges from my uh, tool and cutter grinder so I can share grinding wheels between both machines. And here you can see the combination wrench I made to um, tighten the, the central screw to lock the wheel onto the taper and the other side has an M8 threaded stud to pull the wheel off the taper. Then I wanted to have a chip guard or a spark guard or a part catcher on the left side of the table. There was originally one, but the casting was broken. It was an aluminum casting, so I decided to fabricate my own. I took some cardboard and made a mock-up until I was happy with the proportions. And I took some 3mm sheet metal, cut it out with the angle grinder and welded it all together. quick paint job and fits the machine quite nice. Of course grinding without a wheel guard is very dangerous, will kill you and yeah. I made a mock-up for a wheel guard 
and started to cut out some sheet metal and some flat steel, some steel pipe and I welded it together. I did a lot of welding with silicon bronze because the silicon bronze can build up a, a very massive fillet and make it look a bit like a casting. And also you don't put as much heat into the part as you would with a straight um, steel filler. And that's the guard fitted to the machine, just a te test. I wanted the cover to look a bit neat uh, with a tapered section, so I took a, a bar of flat, uh, a steel flat and I milled a whole bunch of slots into it and then I bent it in the Y's by hand and formed a tapered section out of it. Then I welded it all up again with silicon bronze, bored out the center to make the inner diameter true. Then I pre-panned a disc out of 3mm sheet metal on the lathe. And I welded the disc into the wheel, uh, the guard cover. After some grinding with the angle grinder, it looked like this. And after some finishing parts with some, some add-ons to hold the parts together, the grinder now looks like this and the wheel cover looks also quite good. I have a steel tab on the side of the wheel guard with a, with a slot where I can hang on a um, shop vac or a um, dust extractor set up a, a dust chute or something like that. There it is, the LIP 515 surface grinder. Back together, fully operational and on its final place. <coughs> I rearranged some of the machinery in my shop again. Shaper and lathe changed place, the surface grinder went into the corner and I turned it a bit into the corner. I didn't didn't take the cast iron machine base with me when I picked up the machine because I didn't have space for it in the shop. I built a mobile base with four casters on it so I can move the grinder around and this is especially important because up there over the machine is the um, is the junction box where the power comes from outside into the house, three phase, 400 volt, um, 32 amps per phase. Um, that's also the reason why we have, why I have 400 volt three phase in the shop. For and you need access to this um, fuse box in case something happens. These are the house entry, um, house entry fuses low voltage, high amperage fuses, um, NH fuses. And that's the reason um, if something happens with the fuse box and somebody from the electric company has to come in, he needs to get to the fuse box. And that's the reason why the grinder is on wheels. Now, of course, it's not the best solution to put the surface grinder on wheels, but um, it's a uh, a small enough unit and sturdy enough in itself so I can get away with it. Um, the motor, the original motor burned up on the first test when I ground in the uh, magnetic chuck. The windings of the, of the motor just gave away. The windings were that old that the insulation failed. So I ordered a new motor, hooked it up, and now it's running back again. 
the new motor is not running as smooth as the original. Um, I think I will have to do some. I think I will have to do something with the fan on the motor. Maybe I, I will send the motor out to be um, balanced because it runs a bit a bit rough. But it's a <laughs> yeah, it was cheap. Uh, apart from that, the original machine light is also working. I put an LED bulb into it for what? But it's quite bright and it, uh, the look of the lamp fits the machine. Um, all the slideways work very nice. Table traverse is of course manual. I can grind up to a length of 200 millimeters by 100 millimeters and I think vertical I can go up uh, uh, about 180 millimeters or something like that. So it's not a very big grinder but especially for the kind of parts I wanted to make it's a very handy size and being a horizontal spindle machine it's more versatile than a Blanchard grinder because I can take off my wheel cover, put on a cup wheel and side wheel with it also. So I can also grind slots or steps into parts. And it also doubles as a tool and cutter grinder for lathe tooling, for example. If I have to grind a very precise form tool, this will come in handy. I'm going to build a radius dresser for it and an angle dresser, maybe even a uh, sign angle dresser. There are pretty neat designs out there that I might copy. Up here you can see the two vertical bars for the vertical slide. These are 50mm in diameter hardened and ground cylindrical. I measured them over the whole length and they are perfectly cylindrical, no wear on them at all. The vertical slide fits super snug on them, there is absolutely no play in the, in the board, but the two rubber bellows that protected the, the bars and the spindle are gone, they ripped apart. Um, I need to reorder those, but they are a standard part and you can get them readily available at every industrial supplier, so um, I ordered them. Until then, <laughs> I... But other than nothing. Uh, the whole machine gets lubricated with whey oil. There is central lubrication for the table and the cross slide and the feed screws. Via this oil port, there are two oil ports over here in the vertical slide. Two up here for the bevel gear in here. And the uh, rotating spindle nut up here. And there is an oil port on the spindle. And I'm quite sure you wanted to see this thing doing its job. So I took a, an old charged up parallel and we will dress it up slightly on the uh, big surfaces, on the flat surfaces and regrind it to parallel. So we place it on a magnet. We could place it on an angle uh, so we don't put as much heat into a part. This is normally a, a very smart thing to do, but I want the grinding marks to run along the part. So <laughs> I'm doing the not so smart thing, but I'm not taking off a whole bunch of material. Okay, we make a very light pass.
and as you can see, as you can see, we didn't clean up the whole surface. We only worked. Let's let's do this. When you when you take a sharpie or another felt pen um, and blew up the surface, you can see where you have uh, high and low spots. Let's take another five thousandths of a millimeter. Okay, cleaned up almost all the surface. Okay, now we go back and spark out. There we go. Take it off the magnet. And as you can see, the surface finish is not the greatest in the world. Um, we have some chatter marks. I will have to balance the motor and especially the grinding wheel. This is quite chattery, but it's not, it's better than before. <laughs> it's better than before. It's still on the surface slightly. And you can't even feel the chatter marks. So they are really very, very minute. Uh, let's put it back on the magnet, flip it around. and grind the other side. And it also has a lot to do with technique. Um, as you can see, this side is way better than the first one. Compare this. This looks quite, pretty chowdered up. And this side really looks not too bad. Um, you saw me, I took a pass, I ground one, one way 
and did a, a spring pass back and then I stepped over. I did not grind, step over, grind, step over. I always moved back to the same side. And that's more like a, a ground finish that I like. Still not perfect, you can still see very minute chatter marks, but we're getting there. Okay, let's take the good Mitutoyo digital mic and check for parallelism. We got <laughs> uh, 7.00, so seven dead knots on and I didn't even shoot for a straight number. We got seven here, we got seven here and we got seven down here. So this piece of this parallel is now perfectly parallel as it should be. But it's pretty sure not straight. When I ground it, I just sucked it down onto the magnet and that took out any bow that was in it from the get-go. And doing it that way, you never will get out a bend in a part. As you can see, against the light, um, ugh. There is lights on, light on the end, so the part is bent that way. Um, to get this bend out, you would have to set the part up in the grinding wise, grind out the bow, then flip it around on the magnet, grind the other side parallel to the first side, which is straight now, then flip it around again and grind the other side parallel to the first one. That's the proper way to do it. Or when you put it on the magnet, you shim the part. Um, you put some very thin shim stock under the bow, you put it on the magnet with the bow up and you shim the hollow spot. But that's... I don't like that. <coughs> Another technique is to peen the part. You take a, a cross peen hammer, you take the hollow, si the hollow side, you go on a hardened steel plate and you you peen the part slightly until it's straight, you check it with the straight edge, then you go back onto the magnet, grind the side you peened, then flip it around, grind the other side, flip it around, grind the other side again, and you're done. Uh, peening is, we do it in the, our grinders at work do all, everything by peening, especially long slender parts where you don't have a lot of gr uh, grinding lines. They peen the part straight, grind it, flip it around, grind it again, flip it around and done. Uh, I have never done it myself. I have only seen it done and I will try it and I will also show it on video, maybe, if it works. If not, I will just stop talking about it. So... Hope this was interesting for you. At least I got a new machine and I got to show it off. So thank you all for watching and see you next time.